specify a debug value so that we have a bit more output. Um, we will specify the number of iterations because NLIMP solves a nonlinear problem um, getting the call or estimating the call sensitivities as well as our image in or combined. Then we need to specify a regularization parameter for the, um, yeah, for the regularization of the coils and we pass our trajectory data uh, and data to it. Um, the result is a reconstruction and a sensitivity or and sensitivities. If we now have a look at the output, we can see how in each iteration step um, the NLIMF or NLIMF um, comes or es estimates the solution of the sensitivities and the image um, better and better until um, the final yeah, call sensitivities look really nice and smooth as well as we get a first initial view of how our object actually looks like. Yeah, and in the following, we are going to use these NLIMP um, sensitivity maps for the um, yeah, compost sensing examples with radial data sets, which are then or are now presented by my colleague Chao Ching. And that was um, the first part of the advanced reconstruction tutorial. And yeah, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Xiao Qing, are you going to share your own screen and take over? Right, I will share my screen and take over. Okay, so real quick, one thing to mention is you can really see how quickly you can build complexity with BART going from 2D images to multi-channel data to non-Cartesian data. And this next demo will actually show an example of dynamic imaging where there are multiple higher level dimensions that can also be used. So thanks, Nick, and take it away, Xiaoqing. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's my great pleasure to here to introduce how to the, the advanced reconstructions using BART. So in this part, I'm going to introduce how to perform the commerce sensing parallel imaging reconstructions for multi-coil radio data using the PIX tool in BART. So the PIX tool allows us to do the parallel imaging reconstructions with various regularizations. It basically solves the following minimization problem. Uh, so as you see in this formula for radio data, P is the radio sampling operator and Y is the acquired, acquired multi-coil radio data. The others are the same as in the condition case. So Rx is the regularization term, which could be a L2 regularization or could be a L1 wavelet regularization. The later, the later one is uh, widely used for commercial sensing like uh, reconstructions. In part, there are also many other options. All these spotted regularization techniques can be found uh, using the harp function of for PIX. So if we type bar PIX dash RH, we can see all these spotted regularizations. Um, so in general, if we want to add uh, regularizations for the reconstruction, we need to enable this dash R option. And the following, we have this uh, capital T. This is a single letter uh, specifying the regular regulation type. For example, if we set T to be W, then we can use the wavelet uh, regularization. Uh, following that, so A is the transform flex, which will specify the dimensions where we want to apply the regulation, regulation to. And uh, B is the joint threshold flags. This flags uh, is quite useful when we recruit multiple images with similar contrasts. And uh, C is the regularization, regularization value. Um, so for the recruitment, we can use either one regularization or multiple regularization terms uh, for the recruitment. So here we can see that uh, all options listed here. We will go through uh, some of them by recruiting uh, previously simulated, multi uh, simulated radio data with multiple coils. So let's first do a recruitment with the L2 regularization. To do the recruitment, we need to specify the some parameters for the recruitment. So for example, the regulation strength, uh, which is uh, uh, lambda here, we set it to be 0 0.0001. And in the comment line, 
we use in the part in this common line we use minus rq to choose the l2 regularization with the regular regularization parameter nominal following that we have three inputs um, so the first part is the trajectory the second part is the radio data uh, with multiple coils uh, the third one is the sensitivity profiles which is pre-calculated using either ESPRIT or NLIV. And the finally, this is the output. So let's try to run the reconstruction. So as you can see, the reconstruction took four seconds around and we can get a, a image with good quality. Although there's a slightly streaking artifacts in the middle of the image. Next, let's uh, do the do a similar reconstruction, but with a different regularization. Uh, let's, in this example, we will try the L1 wavelet regularization. And similarly, we will set up uh, some parameters for the reconstruction. Uh, for example, we, we, we need to uh, tell, the, uh, tell the algorithms uh, what regular strength you want to apply and how many iterations you want to use. In the PIX uh, command line, we need, we need this dash RW to choose the L1 wavelet regularization. And uh, next, we need to specify which dimensions we want to apply this L1 wavelet regularization. So here, because we want to apply this regulation uh, in the zeros and the first dimension, uh, we set up the yeah, dimensions like this. And then we put the regularization strains in, in the uh, in the final uh, option here. Uh, for, because we use the phase star to solve the inverse problem, we may also set uh, the, uh, the, man, uh, the dash E here, which is scalar the step size based on the maxim, maximum eigenvalue. value. We also need to uh, yeah, input the number of iterations. Um, yeah, we also need, need the minus option this is to rescale the image of the final reconstruction, which are already answered by John um, uh, just now. And similarly, after that, we have the three inputs. The first one is the trajectory. The second one is the radio unassembled case space and the, the current activities. And finally, we have the output. So let's run the reconstruction. Uh, here. Yeah, the L1 regularization might take a bit longer than the L2 regularization uh, reconstructions. So in this case, it took like 14 seconds. We can see that we can also get an uh, image with good quality and uh, much less streakings uh, in the center of the image. So with this, uh, together with the example three, we should how to uh, expect the current activities from the radio data using either the eSpeed method or the NLIV method. And then we should how to uh, perform the non condition parallel imaging camera sensing reconstructions using, using the PIX tool. Um, so we can, from these simulated examples, we can see that uh, the radio sampling is tolerant to under sampling. Um, the additional L1 wavelet spatial regulation can help to reduce the streaking artifacts further. Um, next, and also the last example, uh, it they can grasp like a camera sensing reconstructions. So instead of reconstructing a single image like the previous example, one can also jointly Extract one image series at once. Um, in this way, um, the sparsity in the additional dimension or in the time dimension can be exploited. Uh, a, popular, a popular choice is to use the total variation regularization along this additional dimension. This is quite useful for recharging images with similar spatial structures but with different contrasts. Uh, for example, in the grasp technique, this is a combined with the good angle radio uh, sampling trajectory. Um, to, so let me first uh, show the 
uh, she will example of the request images from the GRASP technique. The raw data is provided by Tobias Block from the New York University. Uh, I'm using the view tool here. Uh, this is not spotted in the binder um, uh, so far. So if you want to view these images, you may need to download the view tool on your local machine. Um, so we can see that apart from the first two dimensions, we do have an um, additional dimension of these uh, images. When we go through the, the additional dimension, we can see the contrast changes a long time. So how do we, how could we recharge such a, a image series using the uh, BART PIX tool? Uh, let's get started. So let's first load the raw data. Uh, this is a in vivo liver data set uh, acquired uh, with a two fold oil sampling, oil sampling in the read out dimension and was acquired using a continuous good angle video sequence. Let's check out the dimension of the data. So we can see that uh, it has 512 sampling points in the read out dimension and uh, 2,100 number of spokes in the first dimension. And uh, finally, we have six channels of uh, the data. To perform the recursion, we also need to create the trajectory because the trajectory is needed for the recursion. Uh, this could be generated to use the trajectory from the part. To generate the trajectory, we also need some parameters from the data. Here, we need the readout points, which is 512. Uh, and also the number of spokes, which was 2,100. And uh, also because it's a good angle uh, trajectory, we need to specify that the trajectory is in good angle using the dash G, uh, dash, dash capital G option here. So after this command, let's check the dimension of the data. So as uh, we can see, we have three in the zeros, zeros dimension and uh, 512 in the first and uh, 2,100 spokes in the second. And this is, as, uh, uh, this is what we expected. Okay, so after generating the trajectory and the data, we need to do some pre-processing before our, our final regression. So first we do oversampling of the data. This step is to ensure that uh, uh, the uh, the folding in folding artifacts is out of the field of view of the final image. Um, next, we need to regroup our trajectory and the data into different phases. So, in general, uh, in this um, so uh, in this particular case, we want to uh, group the trajectory into one hundred phases with twenty one spokes per each phase. Uh, this is. Uh, we first do the do this rephrasing for our trajectory. This could be easily done by uh, by uh, using the reshape function. So it's basically uh, split of the time dimension into the index ten. So uh, in this way, we have the number of spokes in the second dimension and the number of faces in the tenth dimension. Uh, we can also check the trajectory. Uh, uh, can you see that? Uh, this is uh, also we expected that we have 21 spokes in the second dimension and the 100 spokes, uh, 100 faces in the 10th dimension. Um, so similarly, we can group the data into 100 faces uh, with 21 spokes per face. Um, so we first split, split, split off the time dimension and move that to the move the time dimension to the tens dimension, and then reshape the, the data to make it consistent to, with our trajectory. We can also check the dimensions of the reshaped uh, case space. So you can see they are consistent. Consistent the dimension of the case space is consistent with the dimensions of the trajectory. Okay. So with the preparation of the data, then we can start the reconstruction. Mm, to do the reconstruction, we first need to 
specify some parameters. So for example, we need to tell the algorithm the regular strings and uh, the language algorithm parameter for, for ADM because we use ADMM to uh, solve our inverse problem in this example and the number of iterations. And in addition, we also need to load the, load the pre-calculated cost profiles. With this, we can, we can go to our peaks command line. So this minus RT is to choose the total variation regular, regularization because we want to apply the two TV regularization into the tenth dimension. We use the bar misc to 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 set the uh, the corresponding dimension to be ten, and uh, with the corresponding regularization strength to be nominal, and the Lagrange parameter, the number of iterations. And following that, we have um, here also three inputs. One is the trajectory. One is the case phase and the input cross activities. With this, we can calculate our images. Uh, because this reconstruction took a bit long, uh, it took around three minutes on my micro machines. Uh, to save time, I will only show the results I have already reconstructed uh, previously. Um, so, I so to, to, so I first extracted the five example images from the entire image series and combine them into a single, a single finger um, by using this BART uh, join up, join function. So uh, I first uh, like uh, using the slice command to extract uh, five example images and then use the join to combine them into one figure. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, so we can see that the images are also of good quality we can also see that the contrast changes along the time. Mm, however, we can also see that the orientation of the images is not uh, correct because the arms and the kidneys are on the top. We can, um, we need to flip the, the images for display. This can be done easily by using a part flip command. Um, so basically we need to uh, specify the dimensions we want to flip. In this case, it's the zeros dimension. Uh, by running the flip command, we can get a, a correctly oriented images. So, uh, in, so a short, in short uh, uh, summary, uh, in, in this example, we showed how to do a grasp uh, like a compare sensing parallel image recursions using the BART PIX tool. Grasp can recharge images with high quality for an uh, understanding factor of 19, uh, around 19 in this case. So with this, I want to uh, to thank you for your attention and uh, that is uh, for my part. And uh, yeah, let's go back to John. <laughs>